financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this session of Law and Reality. Jenny Wingo, good morning. I'm glad to see you're here with us. Uh, good morning, morning, Ken. We're going to talk some taxes. We I, got you here. I know. I hear that today. Brian, small, bankruptcy guru. Nice to see you. Pleasure to be here, Ken. All right. The topic today is how to eliminate tax debt using bankruptcy. Next week, we're going to talk about how to eliminate tax debt outside of bankruptcy. And we're going to take a scenario for both shows. So if you're watching this week, you're going to also want to watch next week so you can see both sides of the equation. Our case study and our imaginary clients this week are Bill and Mary. And here are the facts that you guys are going to have to work with because Jenny, I'm going to need your analysis and Brian, I'm going to need yours. Jenny from the standpoint of tax, Brian from the standpoint of bankruptcy so we can identify how this all works out. So Bill and Mary, they own Smith Home Health Health uh, Smith Home Healthcare. They've got 20 they had 25 to 50 employees. <coughs> During the period of a couple last couple of years their reimbursements were cut back, but their expenses were not, and as a result they ran into major financial difficulties and they ultimately closed the business. They failed to pay payroll taxes on their employees for 2014 and 2015. And there's a debt of $350,000 in payroll taxes. They also fell behind on income taxes. Other facts. Their house has $30,000 of equity, mortgage $350,000, business and credit card debt $100,000, personal credit card debt $75,000. After the business folded, Bill and Mary were able to get jobs. They were hired as health administrators by a competitor, and Bill now has a salary of fifty thousand. Mary has a salary of one hundred and fifteen thousand. So they've got good they've got good income coming in. Here's the income taxes that they owe that haven't been paid. From twenty ten, they owe fifty grand. Twenty eleven, forty thousand. Twenty twelve, thirty thousand. Twenty thirteen, thirty thousand. Total taxes one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So they have what they perceive, and they're in our office, as a mess. They've got credit card debt. They have minimal equity in their home. They have $150,000 income tax debt that's owed to IRS. And there's a $350,000 payroll tax liability. All right, first question. What taxes are dischargeable in bankruptcy and what are not? And I right. pose this to you, Brian. Well, we'll start off with payroll taxes are never dischargeable. Right. Tell me what payroll taxes are because Withholding you and taxes. I know what they are, but I don't okay, know that when, everyone Okay, when you own a company and you have employees, they have there's if you look at the paycheck, you'll see that you, as an employee you have FICA. taxes taken out, FICA, Medicare, federal income taxes and state income taxes and sometimes local. Okay. Okay. And so those taxes that are taken out of your personal paycheck as the employee are what the employer has to pay over to the appropriate government agencies. In fact, we call those trust fund taxes. Yes, that's because, an important word, trust. they're withheld from, in my paycheck, the amount that I pay in for Social Security, Medicare, federal withholding and state is my money, and the employer is paying that in for me. So the employer, which in this case was home health care, Bill and Mary's company, was holding that money in trust and responsible to pay it over to the government. When they don't pay it over to the government, that would be a, a breach of trust. And then what happens? That's a payroll. 
then what ends up happening, Ken, is eventually the IRS will come and determine who should be assessed personally for that. So not only are they not dischargeable, it's not a liability that dies with the business. It actually will transfer over to any corporate officers that had the responsibility for um, paying over the taxes. It's even transferred over to office managers, secretaries, okay. other people in the house that were required to pay those over. W let me give you, or, or in the business, not the house. Well, correct. Right. Right. Um, in our case, Bill was the president. He was the owner of the company. Mary was just working there. Bill was the check signer. Mary was not an officer. She worked in the company. Now, they were a team, but Bill was the one responsible. So I, for our purposes and our assumption, I want to assume that Bill is the one who got assessed the tax, not Mary. But is that an automatic or is that no, always a difficult what issue? I would want to say is before you would go in for those interviews, you really need to meet with an attorney because the questions wait, that wait, are... Wait, is that a job interview? What kind of an interview? <laughs> with who's, the, talking, who's getting interviewed here? It's called a 4180 interview and the IRS will bring individuals in. It may be the corporate officers. It may even be employees of a company in order to figure out who was responsible. I'm going to give you the simplest example. Let's say Bill has a stamp with his signature on it and they ask Mary, Mary, do you ever sign checks? And Mary Mary might say, oh, well, I stamp, I stamp the checks with my husband's signature. That's the same thing as signing the check. It can be the same thing. However, if she answers, if my husband drops off the checks that are prepared and asks me to stamp the checks, I do that. And just pass them out. Yes. That shows that he was still in control. So how you answer those questions in the interview, of course, we're telling the truth, can make a difference of between being held personally liable and not. So I guess it's a fair statement to say that Bill and Mary shouldn't go to that IRS interview without first having counsel, knowing the issues, and you going with. And like when we go with, we have a habit. Of, you know, lawyers are called mouthpieces. And the reason why we're called that is when the person asks Mary or Bill the question, a lot of times I answer the question instead. And finally, the IRS officer sometimes says, you know, we'd like to hear from your client on occasion. And I go, oh, okay. Isn't that correct, Mary? Isn't well, that correct, Bill? <laughs> I actually do. I prepare the form ahead of time and I give it for them to study. And often they read right off the form. The, the whole point being is that's a critical interview process. And as you see how this works out over the course of this case study, Having the tax only assessed against one of them, not two, is a really important thing from the standpoint of our ability to extricate them from the liability as matters move forward. We come back from the break, we're going to figure out how income taxes are dischargeable or not. It's devastating. The effects of debt and foreclosure on you and your family. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Some fear the word bankruptcy, but in reality, it's a strategy to save your home and to eliminate debt. If you're in financial trouble, timing is critical. You need to take action now. We've been saving homes and eliminating debt for over 33 years. Call Fav Gross, 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Fav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. 
It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Favgro specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. All right, welcome back. So, Brian, we covered payroll taxes. They're non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. What about income taxes? My 1040 taxes. Some people tell me no taxes are ever dischargeable in bankruptcy. Then again, I've seen Law and Reality. I've listened to Law and Reality. I've run into Brian Small on numerous <laughs> occasions, and I see Jenny Lingle, fortunately, every day, and I also see Brian Small every day. No comment, unfortunately, <laughs> or not. But are income taxes dischargeable or not dischargeable? Yes. When? How? How? Is it simple? Is it an you automatic? You have to file a bankruptcy. Okay, but what? What is there a rule? <laughs> There's lots of rules. Give me the rule. Three years, two years, 240 days. Okay, no this SFRs. Is, Don't forget that rule. Right. Okay. All right. We got a little conversation going. Clarify it for me. So okay. there's a rule so that the, says if, when bankruptcy is If you is would like, to, if you otherwise qualify for a bankruptcy, and okay. you would like to discharge your obligations to the Internal Revenue Service, the State of Michigan, or any taxing authority, otherwise like a local, like the City of Detroit or the City of Pontiac, for income tax. For income taxes, okay. do one, the tax must have come due inclusive of any extensions that you may have filed at least three years ago. All right, so if I, my due date of the return was April 15th, but I filed an extension till October 15th, are you telling me that the three-year period runs from October 15th? Yes. I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm saying that in jest because I know that that's the rule because we've had many discussions about that. But go on. All right, so, so that's the three-year. Right. What's the two-year? Did you file your income tax returns for at least two years? In uh, other words, even though they came, so if I filed it ago, on time, then I won't have a problem with that. That's if I meet correct. the three-year rule, and in other jurisdictions other than Michigan, you actually can have a problem by not filing it on time. I can talk about that in a little bit. The other rule is: Have you been assessed in the last two hundred and forty days? If you haven't been assessed in the 240 days prior to the filing of the bankruptcy, your tax returns have been filed for at least two years, and they came due more than th three years and a day ago. So you mean you've already been assessed? Well, I think what Brian is saying is some you've people have bill, right? additional assessments that come out. So you filed your return two years ago. The IRS may audit and say, hey, um, we're disallowing this deduction, or you didn't include all of your income. So it is possible to have an assessment come out more than two years after you filed for a normal let me take bill for a second tax for situation bill for 2010 and mary owe fifty thousand dollars of income tax if they filed their return on april 14th uh, april 14th 2011 mm -hmm. they filed it timely they filed it timely then in their case their three years would run april 15th 2014 because they filed it a day early with the due date would have still been April 15th. 15th. What we would do in that situation is we would generally wait in a couple extra days if we, unless we didn't have to, unless, unless we were exigent circumstances. Because there are certain factors yeah, that allow for certain extensions of time. There are weird rules that your tax return isn't necessarily due if you were Yeah, why, 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 why risk it on one right. particular day? If there day, was a I federal think. holiday or something, sometimes the federal due date is holiday. April 18th. This year, I think the due date for our tax returns this year is April 18th. Federal holidays can do it. Holiday. If you were in a, in a hurricane zone, obviously we not, we're in Michigan, but uh, <laughs> tax returns were extended. You never know in Michigan. Yeah, tax returns <laughs> were extended an extra month for those people that were involved in the New York Okay, I, I, I get the so point. So there's let, some rules let, there. Let me go back to, what were you talking about, Jenny, with substitute for return? There's an issue with filing the return. If what the, does that mean? A substitute for return or a computed return means that you did not file your return and the IRS or the Michigan Department of Treasury went ahead and prepared a return for you based on the information that they had. That return will never be dischargeable in bankruptcy because it doesn't meet the voluntary compliance So you have to have your own return prepared. You need to sign the return. That's the, but, usually the buzzwords and file it. But it's even, it's even a bigger deal than that. That substitute for return 
if the service prepares an SFR for you and then you subsequently file a tax return that you have signed voluntarily, the law says that tax return doesn't serve a tax purpose and therefore the liability is still never dischargeable so in bankruptcy. you need to make sure you file the return before IRS files it for Always you. Always so file your returns on time. And a quick note on that. And that saves also if you the get If you have not filed your penalty. return and the IRS is sending you notices, pro they're proposing to file and they actually end up issuing a notice of deficiency, if we file a tax court petition, even if we agree with the liability, that would be deemed a dischargeable return later on as correct. it was an adjudicated decision point made on that is if bankruptcy is going to be an available option to you, you need to make sure you fit within that rule. So you need to make sure you file the return and not filing the return is never a good situation because you get hit with a 25% penalty for non-filing in addition to the late paying penalty. Yeah, there's also and that possibility of going to Leavenworth too. Yeah, it's a legal <laughs> obligation to file the return. But right, let recapping me, I wanna, and bringing it home, I want to bring it home. These I'm taxes gonna, I'm are bring dischargeable it home, cause, cause, in general. All right. Except. I want to go onto my chart before I run out of time for the break. Okay. So in 2010, the $50,000 tax liability would be due. <coughs> April, the two, the three years would run April 15, 14. In 2011, the 40,000 would be April 15, 2015. The 2012, the 30,000 wouldn't be dischargeable till April 15, 2016. So we've got a couple months to wait. And then for Bill and Mary, their 2013 taxes wouldn't be dischargeable when they fit within the rule until April 15th, 2017. Now, all of these are assuming the due date of the return is the 15th and there were no extensions filed on the return. Correct. So we're going to have a planning issue as we move forward to say, can we wait until 2017 to perhaps file the bankruptcy so that we're able to capture that 2013 tax liability of thirty thousand dollars. We're, These we're are certainly going to try. To look at and, and take a look at as we go forward. When we come back from the break. We're going to wrap up what Bill and Mary should do with regard to bankruptcy and getting rid of their tax debt. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt but you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Fav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Fav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. It's devastating. 
the effects of debt and foreclosure on you and your family. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Some fear the word bankruptcy, but in reality, it's a strategy to save your home and to eliminate debt. If you're in financial trouble, timing is critical. You need to take action now. We've been saving homes and eliminating debt for over 33 years. Call Fav Gross, 888-235-HELP. All right, welcome back. All right, so we're dealing with Bill and Mary, and we want to address the issue of can they file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy now in order to discharge the taxes? We know that the taxes fit within the rule and which ones do, but the thing that you said, Brian, is can they, are they eligible for that Chapter 7 bankruptcy? Before you tell us, though, I want to do announcements. We have a seminar coming up February 24th, 2016, and I want, to, I want to see what you guys think of the name of the next coming seminar. It's called The Debt-Free Commitment. I love it. Jenny? It sounds like we can't shop anymore. I like this name because I think it is a mantra. No, you can shop, but you pay cash. <laughs> Um, we can't shop or if you much. charge, you pay it <laughs> off at the end of the month. It's a concept that goes with the mantra of where we're trying to get people to go. If you move in a direction of thinking, I want to become debt free and I want to stay debt free as a commitment, it is a key to financial success and ultimately wealth in retirement. The seminar is February 24th, 2016. We go through all the ways that we go about getting rid of debt with the goal of preserving future income so you start saving money and have funds to retire with. It is from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at our offices in Bingham Farms. You sign up at thavgross.com or lawandreality.com or you call 888-235-HELP. On Wednesday, March 9th, we have another seminar, 6 to 7.30 p.m. at our offices in Bingham Farms. Pat Samasco, our elder law expert from Samasco Law, co-sponsor of the show as well, is going to join us, and we're going to talk about covering your legal and medical issues when you're older. Brian's going to talk about debt issues for the elderly. I'm going to talk about basic estate planning issues, and Pat's going to cover all of the elder law issues. It's an important, good seminar, a lot of information people really need to know if they're in their 60s and their parents are in their 80s and 90s. It covers both of those issues. Sign up for that same way, lawandreality.com, thavgross.com, or call 888-235-HELP. All right, Brian, back to bankruptcy. So we know we have $150,000 of income tax debt that's potentially dischargeable. But I'm going to ask you the simple question. Bill and Mary are making $165,000. I've always understood the issue to be if you're making too much money, you have to go through this means test and you won't be able to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. What does this do for Bill and Mary? All right. So the means test, so that everybody understands, it's what's called the disposable income test. Income minus expenses. Do you have money left over after you apply what the government has is, is applicable standards. They would have money left over unless they, they would had to have pay the full tax liability. A lot of money left over if they take the means test. So normally they would flunk the means test? And normally they would not qualify for a Chapter 7. But there's a big exception. And what is that? It's called consumer versus non consumer debt. If you have more non consumer debt than you have consumer debt, then you can qualify for a Chapter 7 even if you make. $165,000 a year or $265,000 a year. So let me give you my quick year. analysis. I would assume a mortgage is consumer debt. You are correct. I would, consu I would assume the payroll taxes is a business debt. Right. I would assume the income taxes is a consumer debt. You would be wrong. Really? Yes. That's a biggie. That's a huge one. It's not is there an explanation why that's not considered a consumer debt when it's our individual obligation to pay taxes, or we don't have to worry about the reason? We don't have to worry about the reason, but I will tell you that very little of the government makes sense. This doesn't make any sense, but it happens to be the way it is. And the actual rule, the actual reason is because paying taxes is not, you didn't voluntarily get involved in paying taxes. That's you for sure. You have to do it. <laughs> so because you have to do it, it's, it's non-consumer. It's considered non-consumer. It's not business debt. So consumer is what you want, the debt you want to incur, like your credit card debt. What about on the credit cards? I had Bill and Mary have credit card debts for the money that went in the business, and they have credit card debt for personal 
expense. The, the credit card debt that went into the business is business-related debt. It's non-consumer debt. Thus, when you look at all of Bill and Mary's income, and ex I mean all of their expenses, and all of their debt. Yeah, we're going to put it up on a chart. You're going to find out that Bill and Mary's non-consumer debt is about $600,000. And their consumer debt is four hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, the consumer debt's just going to be the income tax, the mortgage plus the personal credit cards. So what? Everything else in this case is not consumer. So, so they the, can file a chapter. They can seven? file a seven, and what it's going to do is eliminate their income tax debt when it's time to file, their business credit card debt, their personal credit card debt, and it will eliminate their responsibility to pay the mortgage. If the they only thing to. that won't. The payroll taxes are still going to be there. That's right. If they want to keep the mortgage and keep the house, they have to keep paying for the house. All right. Well, before you get to the house, just right, so when should they file? If in order to in order to get rid of the 2013 tax debt, they're going to have to wait until I would wait April until 15, after April 15, 2017. Can you? All right. This is only February, March of 2016. Can you? keep the government at bay long enough to do this, Jenny? Can we, do we have enough time? It, most likely we can, yes. We have little sneaky procedures we can follow There's to do that? There's a lot of different things we can do, but you have to be careful because some of the things that you would do would actually toll the statute of limitations, the three-year uh, the three year rule, have to wait even and then longer. you'd have to wait longer. So we would have to be careful. Uh, some of the things that we could do was uh, request an installment agreement. A lot of times it takes them um, six months before they process that and and while you're requesting it they won't execute on your, as well, long as you're your if that's correct and then some people might make the payment for one month or two months and then default and it takes another six months so to come I'm back. looking <laughs> at this from our perspective even though the Bill and Mary are in our offices now in 2016 we would probably plan this in a way to say we're gonna wait until April of 20 17 before we file the bankruptcy because we're going to want to get rid of that 30,000. Right. But You're not going to just jump and throw them into a bankruptcy because you want their money now, Brian? No, there's a lot but of planning that happens in But what's important, this though, is you can't just say, well, then I'm going to come back in 2017. A lot of times the plan to wait to do bankruptcy means we're doing other I mean, things. The, okay, we're, we're wrapping up. One quickie. Go back to the house quickly. we got one minute. So I've discharged my obligation on the mortgage. Does that mean I don't have to pay for the house? If you want to live in the house, you have to pay for the house unless you're ready to vacate the house, in which case then you can probably stay there for free for 14 to 20 and, months. And in this case, there's only 30000 in equity. Suppose we run into another recession. The house now becomes underwater. Bill and Mary want to get out from it. The benefit is by discharging the obligation in the bankruptcy, they can leave any time they want. It's no longer a hit on their credit, anything else. They can actually let it go to foreclosure, live there for free for 14 to 16 months, and then leave. All right, we're wrapped up for this week. Next week, we're going to stay with Bill and Mary, but we're going to figure out what are we going to do to get rid of the $350,000 payroll tax liability that we couldn't discharge in the bankruptcy. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.